With an aggressive Russia to the east, an unreliable United States to the west, and an unpredictable China to the far east, calls for a united European army are becoming louder within the EU. But is this likely to happen? In this video, we will address the three key reasons why a European army may be inevitable. The first reason is an increase in public and political support. Most notably, the former German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, and the current French President, Emmanuel Macron, have both clearly stated that this is one of their long-term objectives. This is also evident over the last 15 years, where EU military cooperation and integration have slowly increased through numerous treaties. For example, the formation of EU battle groups of 1,500 troops in 2007. Then the formation of PESCO in 2017, that deepens the defence cooperation among member states through 60 active defence projects, such as developing a European armoured infantry vehicle. Then there's the Aachen Treaty in 2019, where Germany and France pledged to lend each other military assistance should their territories come under attack. Merkel called it a common military culture, which could contribute to the creation of a European army. Furthermore, in March there is a summit around EU foreign policy, and with France as the President of the Council, EU military integration will be a top priority. However, any agreement between the member states will be a challenge, as certain members, such as Denmark, are opposed to any such ideas. But it's not just the politicians. A poll from 2017 shows that there is some public support throughout the EU. Especially in Western Europe, where countries such as Netherlands, Belgium and France poll between 65 and 75 percent. These numbers may actually be a lot higher now, now that Putin's Russia has invaded Ukraine. Now before going to reason two, I would like to ask you for a quick favor. I've only started creating content recently and your subscription or a like will really help the channel grow. Thank you. The second reason is that the EU cannot rely on the US anymore like it used to. For one, former President Trump threatened to take the US out of NATO multiple times in 2018. And while Biden reassured the world that this would not happen, a future president similar to Trump might think differently. Then there is the AUKUS agreement, a three-country military and technology pact between the US, the UK and Australia. This agreement was made behind Europe's back and replaced a 56 billion euro nuclear submarine contract that Australia had with France. Obviously, this pissed off the French, who immediately recalled their ambassadors from the US and Australia and intensified calls for a European army. Lastly, the US also announced that it's intensifying its military presence in Asia and removing troops stationed in Europe. For example, the US withdrew 12,000 troops from Germany last year alone. The third reason is that there is no common crisis response. A key incident was in 2021, when the US pulled their troops out of Afghanistan without consulting European allies. This resulted in chaos, with the Taliban taking back most of the country within days. For instance, it would have required just 5,000 troops to secure Kabul airport, but the EU failed to deploy even that. And then of course, there is the recent crisis where Putin has invaded Ukraine and is starting to become a larger threat to Europe as a whole. While NATO has a key role to play here, Europe is not able to make decisions for themselves and is overly reliant on help from NATO members abroad. A European army would go some way to have a common response to issues in Europe and abroad. So those are the three reasons why an EU army is inevitable. In the next video, we will turn things around and analyze why a European army is unlikely to happen. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified. Also, please write in the comments if there are other reasons that I may have left out.